What's going on everyone? It is a cold, starting to snow, already got to sleet, 9 degrees, wind chill in the negative, here in the great state of Oklahoma. Uh, there's been some talk about Mr. Carey here, brokering a peace deal that's supposed to be done in April. And I'm in disagreement with that thought train, so I'd like to discuss this uh, peace brokerage. And if you remember how many people uh, over the last, I don't know, 20 years or so have, have tried to broker a deal. You know why they can't? Because it's not time. Seven years is the length of the supposed deal in the thought train of the peace deal. But that is simply a tribulation when that is would occur. Now, when you think of this peace deal or tribulation time of seven years, you got to understand and remember three and a half years of that is seemingly good and three in the last three and a half years of it is really bad so obviously if you cannot have seven full years of good times then it's not really a seven year deal it'll be a three and a half year deal cloaked in a, a seven year time period so you're going to have three. A prophetic year is not the same as a solar, you know, calendar year. A prophetic year is 360 days. You see? And I believe if you listen to the audio book or read the Book of Enoch, it, it is explained in there. The year is 360 days. <clears throat> like a solar calendar year that man has made is 365. So do the math and 360 days times 3.5 is, is what it says in, in the Bible. 1260 days. That will be your first three and a half years of, of uh, supposed peace. But you know, this is a little older article, I'm just using it for reference. And it'll go in and it'll discuss about all the discussions and the laboring and the workings of, of Mr. Carey. How it's all been hush-hush. And they're not really talking a whole lot about the goings on behind closed doors in the secret meetings. And remember this here Ketchup King, Kerry. Remember, they're all related. You know? Bush, Cheney, Obama, Queen of England. All They're all a big uh, <laughs> bloodline of relatives that are related that run the world. They're in the power positions. Remember this dude here, Carrie? Skull and Bones. Remember Bush? Skull and Bones. You know, didn't didn't he wasn't he asked about Skull and Bones before? And he simply said it was a secret. He wouldn't talk about it and he laughed about it and that was the end of that questionnaire about Skull and Bones with him. So anyway Remember during the three and a half or the seven year tribulation, you're going to have the two witnesses, remember? They're going to come down and prophesy. Right? And they're going to have power. You know, some say it could be Elijah and Enoch. And they're going to be able to do things. You know, they can. They can make uh, judgments. They can make plagues and fire come down from heaven. They can turn rivers to red like blood. 
So you're going to have segments of people that are believers in God that are going to understand and know what, what they're doing and why, even though it's going to bring not very good things upon man when, when that occurs. And you're going to have other people that are atheists or agnostics or believers in something else other than, than the real God and they're not going to like it and they're going to really hate it and they're going to be you know they're going to be against God even more because they're going to they're going to I don't know if you can say blame him if they don't really believe in him but they're going to hate the witnesses they're going to realize that these guys are are bringing all this stuff on and they're going to want them to stop Eventually, they'll be killed. And the whole world will be able to see their bodies. For what, three days? So you can understand, or I hope that I can help people understand, that this peace negotiation is all that it is. I do not believe in my art that in April you're going to see people sitting down and actually signing and uh, joy to the world that all of a sudden finally there's seven years of peace. Now, <clears throat> just like when Daddy Bush laid the, found, uh, the groundwork, the framework, for certain things when he left office, trade agreements, they weren't actually signed in until his successor came along, which would be Bill the Liar Clinton and his wife Billary the Liar Clinton when they took over. So if anything I would think this is a groundwork framework he's trying to put together for something in, in, in the future to follow. Although I could be not hitting the nail on the head, but just based upon the, how these people operate in their past events, and they can't get ahead of God's timeline. That doesn't work. That's not allowable. They gotta play by his timeline and they know it. So if they're within his timeline, then where are we? Well I do believe we're in the last days. But as crappy as things are out there, it's gonna get much, much, much worse. When, when we enter into the tribulation. I mean, if you think we're in the tribulation now, hey, ain't seen nothing yet. This is just precursors. They, they're discussing borders, territory, maybe sharing the capital, security needs. You know, it's just, it's just being piped out to the media. I'm not exactly sure where this, this April date came from. But we do have the beginning of the blood moons on April the 15th. That is for sure. And the fact that they're coming on Jewish holiday, that's a big deal. A lot of people are going to say, nah, it ain't a big deal. Just, you know, it's nothing new. Well, let them talk. You know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, they say. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. 
He can only show these things to people and try to help them understand. And if they can't, they're not willing to, then they're just not. And as far as the Ukraine goes, what is Russia doing? Well, they're seizing an opportunity. I've mentioned that before. Ukraine is a key port. They've always wanted Ukraine to be part of them again. And now, they're going to make that happen. Remember years ago, Mr. Gorbachev, tell, tear these walls down. Rah! Ronnie Reagan, freedom! And you remember what happened? You seen pictures of Russia? Empty shelves. Prices hiked way up. Things weren't too good for Russia right around there. Militarily, they were still strong. Economically, they suffered. Now, all these years later, they've rebuilt themselves. They're still militarily strong. Their economy is in good shape now. They have, uh, in their culture, they have beefed up their uh, uh, patriotism again. And, hey, they're the big dog again. The United States, well, if you're going to have a new world order, we stood in the way of it. We used to actually stand for something. We used to actually stand, you know, like for truth, freedom, justice, liberty, you know, good things that we tried to bring to other countries and help their peoples. And we've been infiltrated from within. Baby step, baby step, baby step. Little baby steps at a time. You know, not take a big giant leap. Take little chunks out of us here and there, over and over and over again, till finally our very fabric is eroded. Our morals are gone. Porn rules, right? Yeah, porn and sex, the gay agenda, crapped in or wrapped in a uh, wrapper of human rights. Take God out of school. Take the jobs away. Infuse more immigrants into the, the America where there's more people and less jobs, which means fewer opportunity for all. You do all these things and we're broke as a joke. You do all these things and you destroy a country and you get a judgment from the Lord because you're turning away from Him. Not all the people, but nations are judged overall. That's why we should pray for our leaders. Although at this point, it's not going to do any good. You could pray for Obama and all them all you wanted to, but they worship a dark master. Oh yeah, you better believe it. So the world needs our prayers, the people. We can keep praying for the leaders. There's always a chance they can turn. They have an opportunity, and it can be done. But they've got to want it to be done. It's not going to be done for them. They have to do it willingly. So all the sick and hungry, all the destitute, the lonely, the meek, the afraid, we're the ones that need the prayers. But don't just do it once a week. Do it every day. When you're working, think it in your mind several times a day, silently. I'll be looking into this Ukraine a little bit more and I may make a video about it. <clears throat> I haven't decided that yet. But think about what I've said about this peace treaty because I don't think April is the time. 